Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm your host, Hilma Dimark. Today, we are having a discussion on the indiscriminate littering and, in this, and disposal of garbage. Um, and this conversation surrounds um, an issue that we've been having in St. Lucia for quite some time, but it comes on the backdrop as St. Lucia recently experienced a flash flood that severely affected um, the north of the island, and that was experienced on the 6th of November, 2022. Um, to have this conversation with me, joining me in studio today is Emmeline Zhe, who is the Information and Communications Manager of the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. Ms. Zhe, it's, so, it's such a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Um, thank you so much for joining me in studio. How are you doing today? Good morning, and thank you for having me this morning, and of course, representing the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. Um, and I'm doing very fine this morning. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, to set the tone uh, for this conversation, to kind of give us, um, you know, a bit of background. You know, we've heard of the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. We have an idea of what you do, but um, highlight the role of the organization for us. Okay, in a nutshell, the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority is the organization responsible for waste management on the island. And of course, you know, there are lots of ways that we have to deal with waste on the island. Um, we offer collection service to households and government institutions. Um, that service is contracted. So those persons who are out there collecting are actually doing so on behalf of the organization. They're private, private institutions, private entities, I should say. Um, the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority also manages the loan waste disposal facility, that is the Dedlo Sanitary Landfill. Also as part of that whole system in, with respect to the management of waste is uh, the management of the transfer station in the south of the island. And of course waste from the, the south of the island is transported to that transfer facility in the south, that is in Viewfort. And then the all waste is placed onto what we refer to as walking floor trailers and transported to the Dedlow Sanitary Landfill on a daily basis. We also engage in a lot of community work as well in terms of education and awareness, sensitization, um, various community interventions um, in order to ensure that we get the necessary compliance required if the system that we have instituted is to work and to work in the interest of all concerned. Very nice. That's, that's a, a nice um, synopsis for <laughs> us here. Um, you know, one of the, the issues I think I've been hearing about from the time I was a child, I remember the campaigns while I was in school, is, um, you know, encouraging people not to litter mm -hmm. and going even further to ensure that they dispose of their garbage correctly. And, you know, you may think that this is, an, you know, something that people just see. But I think recently we saw really the effects, the effects of, of that. Um, and I, I can't say that indiscriminate garbage disposal was the, the cause of flash flooding. But I'm pretty sure that you would agree with me that it is um, or it can be a determining factor. Okay. Um, you're correct. It, I, we, we shouldn't say that it was the cause, um, but it contributes to um, the issues that we have in our communities in terms of clogging of waterways and eventually contributing to flooding events. Um, indiscriminate dumping remains a challenge for the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. We have illegal dumping taking place. Um, illeg illegal dumping takes place in waterways, the very rivers and ravines and so on, um, on vacant lands and of course in uh, wherever you have isolated lands as well, there's a tendency for persons to go into these areas and dump illegally. Is that something that we're seeing more of or have we gotten better um, as the years have progressed? Um, it's very difficult for me to actually tell you because okay. it's not something that we've actually measured but there are certain lo locations that are well known for that um, and that has been happening over an extended period of time. Okay. Um, over time as well, you have new areas would emerge 
anytime you know you have an area that is basically isolated vacant and very convenient then you know there's a tendency for that sort of illegal dumping to take place um, littering is also a major issue and it's very evident as we drive along the highways and byways of St. Lucia um, people very often both private and public you know vehicles you would find material being tossed out of windows uh, and contributing to some of the issues that we have in the country today do you think um you know from your perspective it's it's something where people have not understood the effects that these um, actions can have on our environment or how it can affect them and their own households um <laughs> Over the years, what I have, have noticed is that even with our interaction with the public, um, people are aware of what should and should not be done. Mm -hmm. But we seem to have habits that are well ingrained in us and we continue to persist without thinking. Some people do it without thinking. Um, and um, to some extent it would continue. With others, it can be deliberate. I don't know if you have heard individuals say that they're actually doing it to create employment, employment yes. for, some, for some people. For some people, it can be um, really deliberate. And uh, it, 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 to me, I see it as a, a, a it's part of our culture that is hard, very difficult to change. And it means that individuals must make a conscious effort to get to ensure that you know this sort of activity does not permit can continue in our communities i definitely agree with you on that <laughs> one and you've set the tone quite nicely for us Misha. um of course you need to stay with us when we return we're going to delve into um a little further into the issue and we're going to address some of the interventions that can be taken to address the problem stay with us pamela I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, we're having a conversation with Emmeline Jean, who is the Information and Communications Manager at the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. And we're talking about um, littering, indiscriminate garbage disposal, and the effects that it has on our environment. Um, it's just set the tone for us very nicely prior uh, to the break as to you know, the, the scope of the problem in St. Lucia. And right now, uh, Ms. Jean, I'd like you to, to kind of um, highlights for us some of the interventions that you know is being taken by the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority and that further can be taken by um, you know people within their individual households to ensure that we curb this problem. Okay um, as part of the service offered by the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority to the public there's a regular collection service and households receive that service twice weekly um, in, in addition to that, um, there is what we refer to as the bulk waste collection service. This is also a monthly service offered to residents throughout the island. And I want to spend a little time on this particular service because it's, it's a service whereby all um, bulk items are, com are collected. We, we refer to old furniture, old appliances, and I could imagine we would have seen during the rainfall event, you know, um, refrigerators, um, mattresses, stoves, 
but there is a service for all these items and we really have no reason or there should be no reason why we should see these items um, moving through our, our waterways during rainfall, rainfall events. And it's very simple. All residents would have to do is to communicate with the authority if they are not if they are unaware of the day or not sure or cannot remember the day. But that monthly service is offered to all households um, in, in uh, throughout Saint Lucia. Um, outside the the regular collection service offered in terms of the regular and the bulk waste service. Um, Residents are also free or free to visit the landfill site in order to dispose of the waste because sometimes, you know, persons undertake cleaning around their homes or within the community and need to dispose of the waste immediately. Now, if that happens, then persons are free to come to the site to dispose of the waste as long as it is done within the hours, the operational hours of the site. In addition to that, we do a number of community interventions as well. Um, very often we recognize sometimes there are issues of non-compliance within communities, particularly where we have the communal bins, um, those big bins that are placed in strategic locations um, for users of the community. So in some cases you have individuals from outside communities utilizing these bins. Um, in other cases, you may have even the very persons of the communities utilizing them, as we will say, 24-7. And that in itself creates a problem. So there is always the need to deal with, with the community, um, as we would really like the waste to be placed out only on the collection day for the community. Um, wherever we, we do these inter interventions, sometimes it extends to actual house-to-house -house visits um, to interact with individuals, to have conversations with them, to hear what they have to say, and then to, to augment the service in such a way that the service is offered to them, they receive the service, and also ensuring that we minimize as many of the problems as possible. One of the things that we continue to, to, in to um, implement is really bin removal exercises. Okay. Any time it is possible um, for the collection vehicle to go into a community when there's a road opening after roads have been upgraded, we do remove these um, collection con containers, these communal bins, as well as what we refer to as any points, assembly points, collection points, where persons take waste, you know, and place um, assemble that waste for collection, we would prefer to remove this and we would implement that and instead the alternative is for the truck to actually drive into the community and undertake the curbside collection or the door to door or provide a door to door service. Okay, so just to ensure that I'm getting this current, um, correctly, communal bins mm -hmm. are placed in an eventuality that the truck cannot meet certain areas within the community. Very so good. on collection days, mm -hmm. you then need to utilize the bin so that the, the truck can go ahead and dispose of the garbage. Okay, that is the, the ideal, garbage. correct, you ah. correct, yeah. Okay, I don't think that's something that, that I understood. Mm -hmm. So I'm very glad that you, <laughs> you're highlighting that now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of the issues that you also touched on, I think it's very important to highlight um, a little further, especially now that we're approaching, you know, the festive season and rightfully people will be, you know, cleaning out their homes and looking to replace furniture is that of bulk waste um, collection. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if this is just me or is there a limit as to the number of items per household when it comes to bulk waste? Yes, there's a limit. Um, it is a basic service offered to the community so we have a limit of two pieces per household. Okay. Anything in excess of that, um, we encourage persons to really transport it to, to the site so that they would, these pieces would be facilitated, facilitated in that area. Yes. Nice, and you know, just speaking of that, I'm thinking of, um, you know, in small communities where people are um, very close-knit it can be a community drive, you know, you, you organize, because I know some people may think of cost of, of um, you know, disposal of that garbage, but you mm -hmm. don't need to incur it by yourself. If you have a few pieces of furniture that you want to ensure that you dispose of everybody's cleaning for Christmas, you can kind of coordinate and ensure that, you know, 
it's a, a community effort to reduce costs. Yes, that could happen as well, yes. But we encourage persons to ensure that these items are taken to the landfill. Right. Or the, the, the transfer facility in the south of the island, yes. Nice, nice. One of the issues I would also like us to uh, be able to highlight, because I'm sure that it's one um, that you get a lot, the question of enforcement. I can imagine that um, there may be certain challenges when it comes to um, enforcement of in indiscriminate garbage disposal because, you know, you can't be everywhere at once. Okay, there, there's a certain level of monitoring that is undertaken um, through the St. officers of the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority to ensure that, you know, communities comply or there's compliance, the generator, waste generators actually comply. Um, and of course, to ensure that there's compliance with respect to the collection service as well. So um, the officers are on the ground, monitor whatever is happening. Um, what would usually happen though when individuals are identif identified, because we do sometimes identify persons who have engaged in, in activities of, of illegal dumping, um, as long as these persons are identified, the, what the authority would do is to actually work with the individuals and encourage cleanups of the, com the, the areas in question. And I must say there's usually compliance at that point. Um, we really work with the communities and try to ensure that you know, there's voluntary compliance. That is the route that is utilized um, at this time to um, en ensure that things are done. But um, from experience, it is not always the best because we do have persons who do not, for one reason or another, do not comply. Yes. Oh, very true. Um, you know, when we return, Ms. Jha, I'd love for you to be able to give us the information that we require to, um, you know, come in contact with the St. Lucia Solid Weeds Management Authority. Um, of course, you're watching Issues and Answers right here on the National Television Network. Ensure that you stay with us. More What's in the soon. food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The Good Food Revolution. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. We've been having um, quite an interesting discussion with Evelyn Jeff from the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, you know, talking about what can be done um, in terms of the indiscriminate littering that we've experiencing in St. Lucia as well as improper garbage disposal. And you've highlighted so many, um, you know, highlighted the issues. We've touched on the interventions as well. Um, and in the remaining time that we have here, um, I know that one of the things that... Um, you know, usually people can do, and I think that they forget, is that they could call the St. Lucia Solid Waste Authority when they're having issues. I think sometimes it's very easy for you to say, well, you know, um, let me just put the, the garbage here. Even, even, you know, if it's a, a problem that they're having in a, a community, as opposed to calling for direction, um, you know, sometimes we tend to just take the easy way out, right? But um, I think it's important to highlight that you can call the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority for certain problems that you may be experiencing when it comes to um, your garbage disposal. Yes, that is correct. Um, we have a complaint system, so um, residents can call in and to complain with respect to any issues um, experienced within the communities um, with respect to waste management. And of course, um, we can be reached on our various social media platforms as well as on WhatsApp 724-5544 or 285-2762. And 
persons can also call the landline of the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, which is 453-2208. And of course, feel free to communicate because these, the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, whenever these um, issues reach the organization, they're investigated. And of course, the problem issues addressed by the authority. Nice. One of the um, the points that you made is that there's a, a system in place when it comes to garbage disposal. And if we do um, comply to the system, we follow the system, uh, that we should not be experiencing the issues that we're experiencing when it comes to um, improper garbage disposal. But one of the things that you tend to see sometimes is um, people not understanding their schedule when it comes to um, waste collection, maybe they forget the days, maybe um, they're not sure of the times and maybe they miss it and as a result the garbage um, is left on the side of the road. If uh, there are communities experiencing issues where um, even it may be a case where they're expecting the garbage at a certain time and that does not occur, um, what are the options available to them in terms of addressing that problem? Okay, in the event that persons recognize that the service has not been provided, um, they can of course call the, the authority with respect to that. We do monitor as well and very often um, releases are sent out you know, to the public through the media houses as well as through our social media platforms in order to inform the public that the the service may be delayed or you know to some extent there would be a non-collection and as such it would be undertaken the following day. Nice. Um, like we mentioned earlier, we're coming up uh, on the, the festive season. I can mm -hmm. imagine that household consumption, that increases. As a result, we also see um, the increase in, in um, waste. Very good. Um, and so we need to be even more vigilant during this time mm -hmm. um, when it comes to garbage disposal. Any tips for the festive season? Anything that you would tell us to ensure that you know we're aware of during that time? Okay. Um, of course, there will be delays in collection because, of course, the, the volumes usually increase during that that time of year because everybody's cleaning, everybody's changing, you know, um, furniture, changing appliances. So, eating so a lot they, more. They, and eating a lot <laughs> more as well. So there will be lots more waste to be um, hauled out of the community. So um, I would like to... In, mention to the public that there would be delays in the collection service um, in some communities or in all communities and of course to exercise patience um, with the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority as well as to ensure that all waste generated is properly packaged, um, contained, um, to ensure that you know everything remains intact until the collection, collection time and day for the community. And nice. One of the things I want to ensure that we also highlight is during this time, I know that you guys are always, well, nice you guys, I mean the, the authority, um, on top of it when it comes to providing the information. So whether it's, um, you know, the days for the garbage disposal, whether it changes or not. Um, in terms of the platforms that we could use to ensure that we're staying up to date with any changes in your schedule, um, and I say platforms, I mean social media, otherwise, can you provide us with those as well? Okay, we have, we are on Instagram, Facebook, of course the WhatsApp numbers that I just mentioned, seven two four five five four four two eight five two seven six two, and of course calling the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority as well. Yes, and so nice. we're all over. And I would like to give you, um, you know, the final um, words, anything I may not have asked or anything you think it's put, um, particularly important to highlight um, to ensure that the public is aware of when it comes to the work of the St. Lucia Management Authority, anything that you think you'd want them um, to keep in the back of their minds moving forward when it comes to littering and indiscriminate garbage disposal. Okay, um, I think I would really want to leave that particular message to, in, uh, to encourage the public to be compliant. One of our many challenges is generator non-compliance, waste being put out for collection outside the collection day in some communities. And I think we need to do better. We can do better. Um, the service is provided and uh, we have to make maximum use of that service because millions of dollars are being spent on an annual basis to ensure that that service is provided to the populace. And I think we need to do better and to utilize the service as best as we can.
You know, when you put it in monetary value, <laughs> you really understand the seriousness <laughs> of it, right? Yes. Uh, Fisher, I have to thank you so much for coming out, um, spending time with us and ensuring that we have the information that we need to be able to um, better manage our waste. I think it's important. It's, it's not only um, an issue for households. It's an environmental um, a problem that we need to resolve and it's a national issue as well that we need to collectively respond to so I want to say thank you for taking time um, from your busy schedule to be here with us and of course I know that you're always open to coming and having a discussion with us right yes thank you very much and I look forward to another interaction with you <laughs> indeed <laughs> uh, this has been issues and answers right here on the national television network of course ensure that you stay with us as we bring you more content relevant to you and the nation